Hi guys, so in this video we're going to really focus in on the compound time signature itself. Um, so we're going to look at how to recognize it and then how to read and write in compound time and then we'll look at a couple drills in Musician and Aralu and we'll talk about how to work through those. Okay, so what I've got here is I've got up the, sig the simple time signatures and the compound time signatures just so we can compare what these actual time signatures look like. So if you recall in simple time the top number always tells us how many beats that we have in each measure. So in simple time, the top number is always two, three, or four because we either have two, three, or four beats. The bottom number tells us what the beat value is. So in the time signatures that we've been working with, um, the beat value has been quarter notes for the most part. Um, so this meant that we have two beats and each of those beats is a quarter note, but the bottom number really could have been anything. Um, if you look into a lot of classical music, this is where you're gonna find some of the other um, Less, less common time signatures, real seedings like, you know, like 4-2 or 4-8 or sometimes even 4-32, which means that we have four beats in each of those beats are 30 second notes. Um, in compound time, you might notice that this is a little different. Now remember compound time, we still have two, three, and four beats per measure, but you notice that they don't quite look the same on the top anymore. Okay, so what's going on with compound time? Well, there's one thing that we need to keep in mind. Remember that in simple time, the beats all divided into twos, but in compound time, they divided into threes, right? So if we just kind of zoom in on some of the compound time signatures, one thing you might notice is that the beat values in compound time are always dotted notes. And that makes sense if you think about it, that the divisions, if the beats are always divided into threes, if you add up three of anything, it's always gonna be a dotted value, right? If you add up three quarter notes, you're gonna end up with a dotted half note, right? If you add up three eighth notes, you're gonna end up with a dotted quarter, or three sixteenths is gonna be a dotted eighth. So the beat notes are always going to be dotted values, and that's one way that you can recognize compound time signatures. Um, okay, so that's the first big difference. Um, when we're reading the time signature itself, whereas in simple time, the top number tells us the number of beats and then what those beat notes are, in compound time, the time signature talks to us about divisions. So it tells us how many divisions there are within the measure and what the value of that division is. So you can still read it literally like you do in simple time and say, well, in a measure of six, eight, for instance, we do still have six eighth notes within the measure, but we don't have six beats because those eighth notes are each divisions. So to figure out what the actual beat is, we need to add up three of those division values to figure out the eighth note. So if I have three eighth notes in a beat, two eighth notes adds up to a quarter. So if I add another one, it'd be a dotted quarter, right? So to figure out my beat value, you have to take the division value and add up three of them. Um, to figure out how many beats you have in the measure then, you need to take the top number and divide it by two, right? Because it's telling you the number of divisions. Um, so if I take it in 6-8, I would have two beats because there are a total of six divisions and each of those group into two beats then. All right, so to look at another common time signature like 12-8, same thing. So it tells us, yes, indeed, we do have 12 eighth notes, but those are 12 divisions of eighth notes within the measure. And so each beat then adds up to three eighth notes or a dotted quarter. So there are four beats, or you take 12 divided by three and that gives you four. Um, and then if we, we can use this to figure out some of the more unusual ones. So for instance, like nine sixteen, same thing. We have nine sixteenth notes in the measure. Three sixteenth notes adds up to a dotted eighth. So that means I'd have three beats and each of those beats is a dotted eighth note. Make sense? Okay, so that's how we're gonna read the simple time signatures. Okay, so um, the first part, the first section of your uh, musician assignment, you're gonna be um, just looking at a rhythm and trying to figure out how to count it, how to divide up those values. And part of what, how we're gonna use this is if you're given a, if you're given a melody and you need to, just to be able to, to figure out what the rhythm sounds like, we're gonna use these rhythmic syllables to count out the rhythm. We're also gonna apply this dicta to our dictation skills. So when you're listening to a, a compound melody, to be able to listen to a melody and eventually kind of hear the, the rhythmic syllables. So um, as we know, if you're in, in compound time, each of the dotted quarters is one beat note. So if we're in nine, eight, this is one, two, three for your uh, rhythmic syllables. 
And then for the divisions, we're going to count these and a. Uh, and there's lots of different syllables that we could use, but these are the ones we're going to use. So if it falls on the second eighth note in the measure, it's the and. If it falls on the third, it's the a. Uh. So if we're in nine eight time, for instance, we would count this one two three or one and a two and a three and a. Make sense? Okay. So let's try this out. So I'm going to pull up an example in musician. All right, so this would be an example of a rhythm that you might see. And then we're just going to work out what the, the rhythmic syllables would be. Okay, so I know this looks a little different than what we did, but just imagine, okay, this is the 6-8 rhythm that we looked at. Okay, so when you look at this right here, the quarter note, that's really adding up. A quarter note adds up to two eighth notes, right? So this is the one and the and. There's your one and. And there's the a, uh, right? That's the third eighth note of the measure which means that this falls on two, and then you have your and a, uh, right, within that. Or if we look over here in this measure, we've got your one, and that falls on the and, right? It's the second eighth note. So one and a uh, is there, two and a, uh, like that. Okay, so let's just pop, pop these in real quick. So this would be one and a, uh, and then my two and. One and a, two and a, one and a, two and, oops, sorry, <laughs> two, two and a, one and a, two. Okay, so then let's just, real quick, let's read the whole rhythm. And so I recommend after you put it in, try to read it out also. Okay, so if I were to perform this rhythm, then it would go. Uh, let's see, one and uh, two and uh, one and two, one and uh, two, one and two and one and uh, two. Got it? And so once you submit it, you'll have the option to be able to listen to the rhythm again. And so I recommend that you do hit the little play icon and try to sing it back and see if you've got the rhythm. All right, so then on the next section of the assignment, you're given something like this, and you're asked to identify where the bar lines go. And you're going to think about this in exactly the same way. You're just going to count out the values. So you're, what you're looking for, if we're in 12-8, you need to have four beats, or one and uh, four times, right? Okay, so there's one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and a uh, bar line. One and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh, done. Got it? Let's try one more. How about this one? So we're in nine eight, which means I have how many beats then? Take the top number divided by three, so three beats. So I'm gonna have three, I'm gonna have one and uh, three times, right? So one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, bar line. One and uh, two and uh, three and uh, bar line. Submit. And again, I recommend that you listen to all of them because eventually you're going to have to tap them out. So <laughs> try to listen to them as you go along and make sure that you really can hear these rhythms. All right, the next section is meter recognition. So you're given an example like this and you have to identify what time signature it is. So it's slightly trickier because you do have some 16th notes, but it's really the same idea. So you either have two, three, or four beats, right? Two, three, or four beats per measure, right? And if it's in six, eight, you can expect to add up six eighth notes total, or if it's nine, eight, nine eighth notes total. And so you're really just doing some math. And so don't get, you know, scared if you see lots of dots or 16th notes. All the measures are going to be the same, right? So pick whatever measure you want to work with. So maybe you want to work with this measure. It looks the least intimidating. doesn't matter. And add it up. So if you have a, a quarter note, there's my one and a. So there's one beat. Okay, here's the next one. So one and a. There's my second beat. And then one and a. There's my third beat. If I have three beats then, therefore I am in nine eight. Right? That's it. Okay, same thing. It's the same idea. It's just the same, same process. You're just kind of working in reverse. All right, and then you're going to have meter ID, but it's all going to be mixed up with 2-4 with, you know, with all your simple time and all your compound time. And this is where it gets just a little bit trickier because, for instance, 6-8 has a total of six eighth notes in a measure, right? But 3-4 
also has six eighth notes in a measure, right? Because it's got three beats and each of those beats adds up to two eighth notes, right? Two, four, six eighth notes. So you can't always, you just can't, you can't just count up the divisions to figure out whether we're in simple or compound time. What you are going to have to look at is how the beats get grouped within the measure. So for instance, when I look at this, I can see that I see these notes that are all beamed together. The beaming suggests that this is all part of one beat. If it had, beamed in, had been beamed instead into twos or fours, I might be thinking that maybe we were in simple time instead. But because I see the way it's beamed, this to me kind of looks like compound time. So I see the dotted quarters, I see the beaming, this looks like compound. Okay, so let's think about this in compound then, see if we can work this out. Okay, if that's the case, then there's my one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh, it would be 12, eight, right? Well, does that work with the other measure? Sure, one and a two and a three and a grouped again like that, dotted quarters, that looks good, right? Let's try one more. Okay, how about this one? So now, again, look at the beaming. Yes, I see there's three notes that are beamed together, but this doesn't look the same, right? Because when I look at this, I see an eighth note and two sixteenth notes, that's two eighth notes that are beamed together, not three, right? So these are really groupings in twos, or four sixteenth notes adds up to one two eighth notes. This to me suggests simple time, not compound time. Does that make sense? So look at how things are beamed, how they're grouped together. So when I look at this then, to figure out if I'm thinking I'm in simple time then, let's work this out. I know my beats in simple time are quarter notes. This adds up to one, two quarter notes, two, one, two quarter notes, three quarter notes, four quarter notes. So if I have four quarter notes in a measure, therefore I am in four, four time. Make sense? All right, so the next section is rhythm tapping. So you're gonna see something that looks like this. You'll see a rhythm in six, eight, nine, eight, twelve, eight, and you're just gonna tap it back. And this is just like what you did in simple time, except what's a little different, you're gonna notice if I turn the volume up here. You hear this really fast tapping. Um, and what you're hearing here aren't your beats, so don't freak out, <laughs> it's your divisions. So instead of hearing um, two beats, you're actually hearing the six divisions instead. Um, so it sounds really fast. They're all gonna sound really fast, but you need to still listen for the high pitch and that's your one. So here we, what we're actually hearing is one and a two and a one and a two and a one and a two and a one and a two and a. So make sure that you still come in on, on one. Be really careful that you count, but just turn your volume down and just think through it first. So for instance, let's just think through our syllables just like you would before. So. If we think through the syllables, we've got one and two, one, two, and, right? Okay, so then let's just tap our divisions and just try to sing it over the top of that. So it would go one and two, one, two, and. So you're just tapping your one and uh, and you're just gonna line those syllables up with it. Okay, and then try it a little quicker. So one and uh, two and uh, one and two, one, two and. And that's what you're just gonna tap in. So this just turn up the volume when you feel like you're ready. Make sure you come in on one. Listen for the high pitch. So you're one and uh, two and uh, and if it sounds too quick for you, it's okay. Just turn it down a little bit. Just turn the tempo down up here. So one and uh, two and uh, one and two, one, two and is what I would tap in. Got it? All right, so the next section is rhythm dictation. Um, so we're going to work this out just like we did with simple time. We're going to write out our counts and we're just gonna take down some shorthand above the bar, and then we'll come back to the program and input the notation later. Um, so all the rhythmic dictation examples in the beginning are all just six, eight examples that are two bars long. Um, so I'm gonna copy this out. So I'm just gonna close this page for a moment, and I'm gonna open up my scratch paper, which is what I want you to do. So grab some scratch paper and work this out with me. All right, so on my scratch paper, what I've done is I've written out our six, eight time, and I've written out the two bars empty. And then above each measure, I'm gonna write the counts, just like I did before, um, but I'm gonna write the divisions also. Um, so I'm gonna write one 
and uh, two and uh, one and uh, two and uh, like that. Okay, so what I'm going to do the very first time when I listen to the, the rhythm is I'm just going to follow along with my pencil on each of these divisions and it's going to make it a little bit easy because the metronome is going to actually count off the divisions for me just like it was with the tapping and I'm just going to follow along and I'm not going to write anything. I'm just going to focus on where I heard things fall as I was listening. Got it? Okay, so the first time through just listening and tapping along with your counts. Okay, so here is the rhythm. So I'm gonna hear one full ball, one full bar of counts. I'm gonna hear the one end to two end. Okay. Got it. Okay, so if I can remember anything, maybe I make some little marks. So I thought I, I wasn't sure. I don't know. Da, da, da. I'm not sure, but I think maybe in the last beat I heard da da da. I heard each I heard something on each of them. Okay, well I don't know. Let's listen to it again. It's the same thing. I'm just gonna follow along and you can turn down. If it's too quick, just turn it down. Again, just turn the tempo down. Okay, so we're gonna hear one bar for nothing first. So two and da. Okay, so try to replay back what you heard. So let's see, you maybe just try to tap and see if you can remember what it was. Da, da, da. So I don't know, maybe I heard da, 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 da. Uh, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> okay, that's okay. Get a guess down, listen to it again. That's all right. So how did it go again? To end. Uh, got it I got it um but it's easier if you can get a hypothesis down just a guess down it makes it a little bit easier because then you can go oh no 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 I heard one more thing here or oh I didn't hear this here right but if you can get something down on the page that'll give you something to work with now remember each of these slashes that I've got here the one and uh, two and does each of these are eighth notes right so oops I got too many here so each of these are actually eighth notes in the measure so if I hear here something land on one and then I don't hear something till here again, then that means that whatever happened here amounted to three eighth notes, right? All of this. If I add up three eighth notes, I get a dotted quarter, right? So that means I heard a dotted quarter and then I heard two, something that lasted for two eighth notes and then it hit, right? So two eighth notes, oops, I'm sorry, I, miss, I need to add a dot on that. Two eighth notes would be an, a quarter and this would be an eighth, right? Two eighth notes and then an eighth. And then I heard something that lasted all three. So that's going to be a dotted quarter, right? And then I heard something that hit on all three eighth notes. So that's gonna be like that. So what I recommend before you put it in is to try to sing it back. Right? Sing back what you've got on the page and see if it sounds right. So if this is what it is, then the rhythm should sound like this. Let's see, so one and a two and one, two, a one, two and. A. Okay, so let's listen to it and see if that is indeed what we heard. And a two and. A. Checks out? Checks out. That's it. So then, then put put your notation into a ralu once you think you've already got it. So write out the whole six, write out the two bars, and then you're going to write your counts above it. One and uh, two and uh, above each of your measures, and then just make little slashes through them when you where you hear the notes. And make sure you sing it back. Make sure it sounds right. All right. Well, good luck.